In this video, we're going to be taking a look at all the skills in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, what they are, the entire skill tree so you can see what it looks like, and just what you should be focusing on for the build that you're trying to create. The first thing to note is that there are three different colors of skills going in three different directions from the very middle of the skill tree. These are red, blue, and yellow, and these correspond to bear, wolf, and raven. For all intents and purposes, these can be called a melee skill tree, an assassin skill tree, and a ranged skill tree. But this is a very loose definition because they have a lot of passive skills in each skill tree that you'll find in all skill trees, such as melee damage or range damage. These are present in a lot of the skill trees, so they're not necessarily something that you cannot do if you pick assassin, for instance. You could pick assassin and you could still make a melee character, even if you went all the way down that skill tree. Another thing I want to note about this skill tree is that there's probably about 20 or so of your regular passive skill tree nodes that just repeat themselves throughout the course of the skill tree. What I mean by this is things like light attack damage or heavy attack damage or melee damage, range damage, melee resistance, critical chance. Things like this get repeated over and over so you'll pick up lots of nodes that give melee damage or lots of nodes that give critical chance, etc. So it's not like all unique if you go one way or the other, There's you're going to find these throughout the whole thing. One set of skills I want to bring special attention to is the Way of the Bear, Way of the Raven, and Way of the Wolf skills. Every armor in the game corresponds to Wolf, Raven, or Bear, and these skills give you extra stats if you're wearing that type of armor. These skill nodes are the same cost as every other skill, which is one skill point, and they give you an incredible amount of benefit. So you absolutely, absolutely want to try and wear the armor type that corresponds to these, because you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck if you do. Because these skill nodes are so powerful, particularly early on in the game, it's probably going to prevent you, at least early on, from going different colors in the skill tree. You're going to want to try and stick to one color, whether that's red, yellow, or blue, and stick to the armor type of that at the beginning of the game. That's obviously going to be dictated by the style of play you like. If you like to bow a lot, you're going to be picking blue, and that's because the passives of blue armor sets, or armor sets that are associated with the wolf, generally give you ranged bonuses anyway. So you're going to be picking up passives that help with ranged, and you're going to be using armor that helps with range. So if you want to play range, you're going to pick blue. Yellow is more mixed. It does have benefits to assassination, but also it does have things that benefit range and melee. And it's kind of a mix between the two, in my opinion. And heavy melee is in the top of the tree. So you're going to get benefits, depending on the armor that you wear, that's going to help these things out. Now, later in the game, once you've you know gotten a lot more skill points and you're a ways deep into one of the colors of the skill tree, you might want to branch out a little bit into the other skill trees, the, you know, the yellow and blue, or if you're red, or, you know, red and yellow if you're blue, etc., in order to pick up a particular skill that you like, you know, one of the unique ones. But you probably don't want to try and go, like, half into blue, half into red. It's probably going to favor one more than the other. And the last thing I want to mention before I get into the specific skills themselves, the unique ones of what they do, is that there are passives that benefit certain weapon types in the game. Each weapon type has at least one passive, some have two, that increase their effectiveness by giving them more stun, crit chance, attack speed, etc. So you're going to want to be on the lookout for what these are and where they're located, so you can sort of plan ahead if you find a weapon type that you like. Okay, let's talk about the Raven skill tree first. These are the yellow nodes on the skill tree on the bottom left-hand side. The Raven skill tree has two unique passives that you'll find throughout the tree that are not found in the wolf or the bear, and these are mainly critical chance and evasion. You cannot find either of these in the blue or red skill line. You can find them multiple times here. So if you're looking to get melee critical chance or you want to increase your chance to evade attacks, this is a good skill tree to pick. It also has a lot of stealth nodes as well as assassination damage nodes. So if you're someone who likes to sneak up and assassinate targets in true Assassin's Creed fashion, then this is also a good skill tree for you. Taking a look at the unique skills here, the first one you're going to get is backstab. This allows you to do increased defense damage when you're hitting a target from behind. You're going to see a second bar above the health bar of the enemies in game. This is their defense. Once you break through this, they're staggered and you can do a punishing stagger attack. So this is going to allow you to stagger enemies more easily from behind. Straight down from that, you have advanced assassination, and this is going to allow you to assassinate harder to kill enemies throughout the game. If you're going to be someone who's playing a stealth build or one that likes to kill things from stealth, this is going to be, uh, at least in melee range, this is going to be a good pickup for you. And straight down from that, you're going to have breakfall, which allows you to roll when you're jumping from a high height in order to reduce the damage you take. This is just a good all-around one to have no matter what type of build you play because it's going to allow you to traverse the landscape much more easily. And down below that you have Missile Reversal which allows you to return a projectile fired at you to the target dealing damage to them. To the left of that you have Auto Loot. This allows you to automatically loot a target that you assassinate or kill in melee so you don't have to run around looting things yourself but this is just a quality of life one to have. And you'll find that if you look through the yellow skills, the unique yellow skills you'll get here, 
a lot of them are quality of life. So if you're someone who just likes to have an easier time in the game in general and not have to worry about looting or jumping from high places, etc., this is not a bad skill line for you. Above that, you have Chain Assassination. This allows you to kill a second target immediately after the first one by tossing an axe at them. So if you're, again, somebody who likes to play a stealth, you know, melee assassin type build, this is a good one to have. Directly above that, you have Guided Arrow, which allows you to guide your arrow to the target if you're using a Predator bow. This is kind of like what they had in Odyssey. I don't remember if it was called exactly the same thing, but you can control the arrow in the air and, you know, guide it to its target. So if you're playing a bow build, this is a good pickup for you. Above that, you have Brush with Death, which slows time if you dodge just before you're struck, allowing you to get hits on enemies nearby much easier. This, again, was also in Odyssey in some form. So this is just a generally good one to pick up no matter what type of build you're playing in order to get some time slowing in order to make you more effective in combat. And then to the left of that, you have Predator Bow Combo, which allows you to deal increased headshot damage with consecutive shots against the target. This is good for taking out hard-to-kill enemies if you need to shoot them several times, uh, and is one you should consider picking up if you're playing a bow build. Below that, you have Explosive Corpse, which allows you to basically booby-trap an enemy that you've killed so that if enemies come over to investigate, they explode. And below that, you have Assassin's Cantrip, which allows you when you parry an attack perfectly to throw a smoke bomb and basically allow you to escape. So maybe if you're surrounded by a bunch of enemies and you want to get away, this is great for an Assassin-type build, so if you get pulled into combat, you mess something up, you can vanish again quickly and get back into stealth. Up into the left of that, you have Miasma, which allows you to create a poison cloud if you kill an enemy with your poison attack. It doesn't damage you, but it will kill enemies that walk into it gradually. So this is good if you're going to be playing a poison build, and it's really going to be up to you in terms of like you know whether you're using poison or not, and it's very, very specific. It could be very deadly on a bow that does poison damage, though, because it doesn't have to be a melee attack, it's just poison damage itself. So if you shoot an enemy from far away and then a poison cloud triggers and kills everything near it, that could be particularly powerful. And then above that you have counter roll, which allows you to, if you time a dodge perfectly during an enemy's red rune attack, which is like unblockable, unparryable, you'll actually roll over them and be positioned behind them to follow up for a counter damage. Moving along to the wolf skill tree, which is the blue skill tree on the right hand and bottom right hand sides. This skill tree is very good at range damage, has a very heavy focus on using a bow, so if you're somebody who likes to use a bow, this is a good side for you. And it also focuses on killing things from stealth as it has assassination passives as well. So if you want to get increased assassination damage, this is good for you. The two unique passives that it has throughout the skill tree are range damage resistance. So you're going to take less damage when you get shot or thrown projectiles at you. And also ranged critical chance. So if you want to deal ranged critical damage, you're going to find those throughout this tree as well. The first unique skill here is called Bow Stun Finisher. And this allows you to do a finishing move on staggered enemies or stunned enemies that you can do from range. Directly below that, you have Sprint Attack. Sprint Attack allows you to do a running attack while you're sprinting at an enemy. This is great for any build, really, especially if you're mailing. It's not so good for a bow build because you're going to be trying to stay back if you can. But if you want to run into battle and enter with a thunderous entrance, this is a good thing to pick up. And you should consider maybe picking it up if you're going to play a melee build. Below that, you have Last Chance Healing, which basically slows time when you're about to die, giving you time to heal really quickly. And again, this is just good for anyone in general. Below that is Adrenaline Upgrade. This is just going to give you one more Adrenaline slot that you can fill up throughout combat, which is excellent. Up into the right of that is the skill called Grit, and this allows you to gain back some health when you attack enemies that have attacked you very recently. So if you're somebody who is probably mailing a lot, getting hit a lot, probably going to want this one at some point. Directly above that is Battleground Bolt. This allows you to pick up a nearby weapon and throw it at an enemy, which is great. It's good on any build, really, because it can give you a ranged attack even if you're a melee-based character, if you're not, you know, really focusing on bow damage. Directly above that is Bow to Melee Link, and this increases your damage when you alternate between Melee and Bow and Melee and Bow. I'm not sure this is one of the greatest skills in the game. Usually you're just picking something off at range in one shot, or two shots, uh, or trying to Melee something to death and finish it off. I don't think there's too many scenarios where you're going to Melee something, back up, shoot it, and then Melee it again, so I'd recommend probably not getting this one. Up and to the left of that is Emergency Aim, and this allows you to snap to the target with your bow when someone is detecting you so that in hopes that you can pick them off before they reveal that you're there and sound the alarm. And this is good to have. Again, there was a version of this in Odyssey, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a good one to pick up if you're playing a bow build. Up under the right of that, we have Hunter Bow Combo, and this allows you to fire your next arrow much more quickly if you release the first arrow right at the end of your draw. So this, again, is going to be good for somebody who's, you know, using a Hunter Bow, probably, um, because these are the ones that charge up. So to the right of that we have arrow reinforcement and this prevents your arrows from breaking no matter whether you hit the target or miss the target so you can always retrieve them. And this is a very good one to have because if you're somebody who's playing a bow build uh, you're going to need as much ammunition as you can have. But it's not as useful as you might think um, because there are arrows scattered around just about everywhere in the game. But it will make your life a little bit easier if you're playing a bow build so it's definitely worth taking. 
Down into the left of that is Stealth Adrenaline, and this allows you to gain adrenaline when you pickpocket or loot a chest in a restricted area. So if you're going to be playing a stealthy build, this is going to be very good for you. To the right of that is Stealth Recon, and this makes it so that when you're crouched and undetected, the game automatically marks enemies for you. It's a nice to have, but it doesn't take very long to, you know, click the right stick and reveal enemies. So it's a quality of life thing that just might make playing stealth easier for you, but it's not necessarily necessary. And finally below that we have Charge Shot, and this allows you to fire two fully charged shots from your Hunter Bow, dealing twice the damage. Uh, and this is just great for a bow build, particularly when you're already in combat and you're not going for that like headshot, one-shot kill. Maybe if you're fighting a boss and you're trying to play like a ranged-only build, this would be a good to pick up. This brings us finally to the bear skills, which is the last set of skills we're going to be covering in this video. These are the red ones on the top of the tree, and this focuses primarily on melee combat. There is a small focus on bows as well. Using the light bow, there's a bit of combos there with that. But primarily, if you're playing the bear, you're going to be playing mostly melee. There is not a large focus on assassination here, as I have not seen any assassination passives in this skill tree. And the two unique nodes in this skill tree are melee resistance, so you're going to take less damage from melee attacks, and critical chance. Critical chance applies to both ranged and melee, so this is going to allow you to do criticals with your light bow, probably, that you're using, and your melee weapon. The very first unique skill you're going to gain is Stomp. This allows you to click the right stick on a downed or stunned enemy and to do incredible damage to them while they're down. This is very, very good if you're playing a melee build, particularly in the game, so I highly recommend using it. Up and to the left of that, you have Dual Swap. This allows you to swap which weapon is in your main hand and which weapon is in your offhand when you're dual wielding. The reason you might want to do this is maybe one weapon has poison on it, one has fire, and the target you're fighting has, you know, maybe more fire resistance or something. I'm not exactly sure what all the benefits of doing this are. I haven't played a lot dual wield, but nevertheless, it allows you to do it, so you might want to consider picking this up if you're dual wielding. Up top left of that, you actually have two uniques. You have Adrenaline Upgrade, which gives you an extra Adrenaline Bar that you can fill up, which is great, and Berserker's Metal. Berserker's Metal basically allows you to shrug off the first attack when you're trying to fill an Adrenaline Bar so that you can fill it more easily. Usually when you get hit when you're filling an Adrenaline Bar via attacking, it resets your progress, so it make, takes longer to fill an adrenaline bar if you get hit and you make a mistake. This is going to make it easier for you to do that. And up top left of that, you have Heavy Dual Wield. This is going to allow you to take two-handed weapons like the Greatsword or Dane Axe and actually dual wield them at the same time. It does adjust the stats of these weapons. I'm not exactly sure how. I haven't picked up this passive myself and tested it out. But it's going to allow you to do that, so if you're somebody who likes to dual wield and you want to dual wield some big badass weapons, this is probably going to be something you pick up. Up and to the right of that, you have Terror. This allows you to make enemies around you, weaker enemies around you, feared when you finish an enemy off with a finisher. So if you're in melee combat and you use a finishing move, enemies around you are going to be terrified for a moment, allowing you to get in some easy attacks on them. So this is very good for a melee build. Down and to the right of that is Light Bow Combo, and this allows successive shots with your Light Bow to deal more and more damage. As I mentioned before, the Bear skill tree has a lot of focus on melee, but it does give some bonuses to the Light Bow. So this is probably something good to pick up if you're going to be using a Light Bow as well. Down and to the right of that you have Perfect Attack, which increases the damage of your next attack if you time things properly. So this is good to pick up if you're a melee build no matter what you're doing. Down and to the right of that is Parry Damage. And parry Damage makes it so that your parries actually deal damage. Normally they just, you know, rip off defense of the enemy, allowing you to stagger them very, very quickly, or sometimes just outright staggering them, allowing you to do a finisher on them, killing them in one hit. But in this case, it's going to allow you to deal damage to them as well. And this is really good when you're fighting, like, harder to kill enemies because it allows you to deal damage while you get parries, which create openings for you to attack. So if you're someone who likes to parry a lot, this is an absolute must for a pickup. Above that, you have Adrenaline Fiend, and this makes it so that when you fill an Adrenaline Bar for a short time afterward, you're going to deal increased damage and attack faster. So if you're somebody who's in combat just hacking away, fill up your Adrenaline Bar, use it, and then start spamming attacks, fill it up again. This is really good to like fuel fast combat, and is good for any melee build. Up under the right of that you have Arrow Volley, and this allows you to discharge multiple arrows at once with a light bow. So again, if you're going to be using a light bow, this is a good one to take. Up under the left of that is Sprint Bash, and this is going to allow you to destroy breakable objects by sprinting into them or push enemies or NPCs over. So if you want to like knock something down or break something without having to use a consumable, this is a great way to do it. Down into the left of that you have Warrior Takedown, and this is basically going to be a way for you to assassinate an enemy without assassinating them. You're going to walk right up to an enemy that doesn't know you're there, Press R2, and you're going to just absolutely obliterate them, and you're going to gain an adrenaline bar for every enemy around you. So if you want to walk into a camp and just basically challenge everything, fill your adrenaline bar at the same time for, you know, a standoff, this is a great way to do it if you plan on not playing stealth at all. And lastly, up and left from that, you have Battlefield Cremation, which allows you to set an enemy's corpse on fire from your fire attack passively. That will then possibly set other enemies near it on fire as well, dealing fire damage to them. 
So if you're playing a fire build, this is probably a good choice for you. So that's a look at the skills in the skill tree of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There are a lot of great skills to pick up in this game all over the skill tree, no matter what type of build you're playing. But again, I want to emphasize that the Way of the Bear, Way of the Raven, and Way of the Wolf passes throughout the blue, red, and yellow skill trees are very, very strong if you're wearing the corresponding armor. So you probably, at least early on and maybe even early mid-game, are probably not going to go, you know, in different directions in terms of color. Probably going to want to stay in red or stay in yellow or stay in blue for the most part until you find other armors that are really good or maybe, you know, benefit the type of build you want to play. Stay tuned for a couple more Assassin's Creed Valhalla guides, including a getting started guide and combat tips guide if you want to learn the ins and outs of combat, what all the stats do, and different weapons and how to use them effectively. Be sure to check that out. And if you haven't watched our review on the game already, be sure to check that out and see what we think about it. And head over to the wiki if you have specific questions about the game.